Hello everybody, Flightpoint speaking. Today we will be looking at the first half of the Concord's timeline. Next Saturday I will then release the second half of this timeline. Moreover, this video is the first in a series of seven videos about SST supersonic transport with focus on the Concorde. I won't waste any time, so let's go. At this date, mankind broke the sound barrier for the first time. This happened in an experiment where a pilot flew in a Bell X-1 for the US Air Force. The aircraft hit Mach 1.06, which is about 1,300 km per hour or 800 miles per hour. However, this feat became known several years later because this happened in all secrecy at the American military. Throughout Second World War, the Nazis made great progress in aerospace technology. Some years later, the British scientists seized these ideas and further developed them. This ended with a plan about how to build supersonic transport, or SST, which had been a dream since mankind broke the sound barrier. The British plans costed about 100 million pounds to realize. At the same time, French had similar plans about constructing a supersonic aircraft. That is why the British and French went together to build the fastest aircraft in the world. They would build a supersonic aircraft and share the expenses. Concorde 001 flies its maiden flight. This was the first time the outside world saw the Concorde in the sky. A lot of people arrived around the airport and takeoff and landings was broadcasted live on television. This happened to be a great success and a month later the Concorde 002 flew its maiden flight in Great Britain. In 1972 Concorde was still very far from flying passengers for airliners. Moreover, the expenses had reached more than a billion pounds, which is more than 10 times the calculated expenses. After more world tours, where the Concorde was shown to both the population and especially the airliners, chose several of these airliners to buy Concords. Overall, 74 Concords were ordered, but after an air show in Paris, where the Concorde's Soviet competitor TU-144 crashed, a lot of the airliners chose to cancel their orders. The Concorde was not fully developed and ready for mass production, but this time where it was ready caused several problems. In the start of 1973, the oil crisis started. The fuel prices exploded, which generally was expensive for the aviation industry, but especially for the Concords, because it used so much fuel. Moreover, this was the time when environmental critics began to raise their voices. After a lot of years with developing and mass production, the Concorde was finally ready to take off with civil passengers for the first time. One flew from London to Bahrain and another from Paris to Rio de Janeiro. Both aircrafts were completely filled up with passengers. Everything from ordinary people to ministers and celebrities. When the Concorde was ready for commercial flying, USA announced that it was not allowed to take off or land in American airspace. This was exactly why the first two flights did not go to USA. But the 22nd of November 1977, this announcement was taken up in court. 
It was then declared that the announcement was illegal, and short after the Concorde began to fly between Europe and New York, which is known as the most popular route for today. That was almost all for this video. Because I want to tell you about my Christmas specials. My videos in December will be about some of the legendary pilots, together with real Julehygge, as we say in Denmark. Anyways, have a nice day folks. Bye bye.